righty, we're recording. Welcome to Captain Dave Sport Fishing, and we're doing a podcast here on the day of the hurricane in Florida, which is now all the way up in North Georgia. It is uh, August 30th at 7.50 at the p.m., and in Jacksonville, where I'm located, we didn't have hardly anything. About 40 mile an hour winds, and it's Twig City outside. Twigs everywhere, blowing out of the trees. But this is the video that I said that twice I mentioned it. The day it was my last radiation treatment, and the day that I went underneath the bridge, I made that video just to sort of announce this and throw in some just local down the street from me sites. So I got Orwalk here, who is a Hello, big, YouTube. big commentor, big YouTube, YouTube channel supporter, also known as Gary. And he's in Long Island, New York. And through the magic of StreamYard, we're doing not a live, because we did this before as live, but we're going to call it our first podcast, right? Yeah. <laughs> we don't know what a podcast really is, but we're just saying the words because that's what it seems like everybody calls them. So what's been going on with you, Gary? What have you been doing lately? Uh, just working a little, a uh, little repair work, did a repower, got some maintenance work coming up. Okay. Uh, nothing, nothing crazy. No, you, you, you're an outboard mechanic, right? Yes, I am. Okay. He's an, he's an outboard mechanic. And the reason you're watching this is I'm a guy who does fishing videos in the charter business, along with knife sharpening videos. What else do I do? Uh, outboard maintenance videos. They're my most popular videos. They've taken over now what used to be ugly stick videos. I just, I mean, just like today and yesterday, I had like two or three um, comments on video on videos I did about um, maintaining the, the good old Suzuki 250. But the reason we're doing this, as I said, before, I don't know if anybody ever catches it because when somebody comments, they comment, but they don't comment on the hints that I'm throwing out there. <laughs> so, you know, I always say as a YouTuber, you never know what people think or anything because you really don't get, I mean, you get a comment, but you know, I appreciate all the support and everything from doing the prostate cancer radiation and all. But um, that's completely over. But the big deal is the reason we're doing this, and we're doing it as a video, not a live stream. And as I said before, live streams are great. I love it because people throw in their comments and it's right there on the computer. I can read them. But when you're just trying to cover a certain topic, they can be a little bit distracting because you're always looking at the comments and you're bouncing around all over the place, which when we did them before, didn't you feel like we were kind of bouncing around a lot, Gary? Yeah. It's, it's you know, it's, it's hard to focus on the things that you, that you want to talk about more or less, you know, it's, yeah. it's a little more difficult. So I mean, we we try. Try. yeah, we'll give this a try see what happens. Yeah. We tried before, um, you telling us about, you know, mechanic work, right? Outboard mechanic work. We, we tried a live stream talking about trailer issues, I believe, because I'm an 18 year one trailer owner. I mean, for the same trailer for 18 years, I thought that was pretty unique, but then I don't know if we ever discussed too much of that during that, during that live stream. Yeah, but, I think it it kind of drifted off into like another, you know, yeah. realm of that. I guess you could say, you know. 
I'm going to let the fans know that I'm drinking a PBR. For people who don't know what PBR is, it's Pat's Blue Ribbon. Just for this, doing this with Gary, I got me a four-pack of 16 ounces. Because I'll tell you, I did the math. Four 16 ounces, you get less than six 12 ounces. And they do that purposely. They almost seem to around here. I don't know about in your area, but they seem to phase six packs almost out of ex existence. Yeah, it's it, a lot of the stuff you have to buy a 12 pack or an 18 pack. And then it's either that or like an individual one, I guess, you know, this, yeah, the six yeah. pack is going, you know, it's being phased out. Yeah, because they can give you less because I did the math. It's not a whole lot less. I mean, it's like, you know, three or four ounces or something. If you take 16, you know, times four and then 12 times six. I don't know. I did the math a long time ago, so I don't really know what it is. <laughs> yeah. It's... But, all right. So my big announcement, because I made two videos talking about how I'm going to do an announcement, is, well, just to give a little background, before I actually was in the charter fishing business, and it's going right now, this is the 27 years as full time, day in, day out, charter business, full time, not part time, not making my boat payment with somebody else's money every month, where I only need one charter just to make that boat payment because the wife is saying, hey, if you want that fancy boat, you better get your ass out there and figure out how to pay for it, which is like <laughs> probably 90% of these guys that have $200,000 boats, okay? And they're either retired or a doctor, or, you know, you know, retired Navy. It's all these different guys. I know them all. Even if, I mean, that's around here. I don't know about your area or whatever it would be, but after working you know i worked as a um, let's say i i started out basically as a air just working for an air conditioning company and i worked for three or four different companies two were basically residential and two were commercial doing hvac heating ventilating and air conditioning dash some refrigeration and uh the best place i ever worked um, i was basically in a four-year apprenticeship program and around here i don't know what the rest of the country i don't know what the rest of the, the state even is but what you're working for through the through the apprenticeship is you know the people you work for are a member of a like i work i did uh, Northeast Florida Builders Association. Everybody was a member of that and they paid to be a member and that's where they got their their employees to be apprentices. And uh, the last place I worked, I was in about my third year, maybe starting my fourth year. And the goal is always when you're in the trade, I don't know about anywhere else, is becoming a journeyman what they call a journeyman have you ever heard that up your way i have heard it yeah i've, I've heard journeyman yeah. Okay. yeah i don't know if it's just it's like state certified or anything like that okay because i grew up in a family where my dad wasn't one but his brother and his sons uh especially one of his sons were all in the electrical workers union up in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, type thing. My my dad's mother worked for the Electrical Workers Union for thirty something years or whatever. So either way, I was working sort of towards that. And the last company that I worked for, which was still teetering on it, we did air conditioning, heating, ventilation, some refrigeration, but basically. 
they were an old company that was what would be called a mechanical contractor where there's a lot. I mean, there's like plumbing under one roof, heating, air conditioning, ventilation, refrigeration, pipe fitting kind of stuff. I guess they used to do in the old days. Well, the old man, he was uh, getting ready to retire and they were selling the company and everybody was jumping ship like rats because they didn't want nothing to do with, you know, the new owners or whatever was going on. <clears throat> and I went to work for the state at the University of North Florida. And I was in the apprenticeship program while I was working there. And that was like, going to school three days a week. It was like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for like four hours a night. And, you know, doing some proficiency testing and stuff. And then your employer would get paperwork on you and that's how he gave you raises. But the end product was taking your journeyman's exam. There's probably somebody that's going to watch this that knows a whole lot more about it than me. So when I went and left this this company this particular company was the last one i worked for everybody was scrambling i found a state a job with the state of florida at the university of north florida they didn't care about journeymen they didn't care about your school they weren't a member of the northeast florida builders association they didn't care they wanted a body to do jobs so i kind of pumped out of it i guess because it wasn't kind of a mandatory thing. I, I don't know what my mindset was back then. It wasn't obviously a good mindset. <laughs> if it was a good mindset, I wouldn't have gone to work there. Um, so the long story short, my big announcement is, is after 27 years of doing full-time charters, which I don't know if everybody knows that, that that is all I've done. And when I say part of my income is YouTube, so it has been, and there's been, oh, hills and valleys with that YouTube. Oh, man, everybody will tell you that. Is It's the same as the charter business. There's hills and valleys with that. I've decided to go back to air conditioning school. And I start on September 19th. And it's for seven months. And I actually, at first, enrolled in the welding school. This is all through, right here, I got the handbook. This is like your college handbook through Tulsa Welding School. Well, Tulsa Welding School all started out as welding, but they also do HVAC and refrigeration and becoming an electrician, All right? So I'm going to go to this HVAC refrigeration school for seven months, every single day, Monday through Friday, from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. every day. Now, the welding was different. I could start at 1, and it goes to 6. So... Actually, it gives me a chance to either do some trips, some charter trips during the week, and even just say, screw it, and get a job, and then go to school every night, which is very much a possibility. So you, you, started, the, you started a little bit of the welding school already. Have you started the electrician school at all yet, or is that to come? No, it's HVAC. I'm, I'm, excuse me, the HVAC school. No, I haven't started any of it yet. I've been going through the paperwork and... and oh, oh, okay, yeah. okay. I haven't started it yet. It starts okay. the 19th of um, of September. I'm looking at my calendar. There. It is the first day, and then we have a day, like a week before you have like an orientation. And Friday at 2 o'clock, see, because there's this wonderful woman there. Her name is um, Allie. And I told her, I just called and said, hey, I want to go in here and I want to talk to somebody about welding. And she said, come on in. I'm a, I'm a student advisor. 
I walked you through the process. So I went in there, I was all gun ho, but I knew I had some lead time to think about it. And I started thinking, I mean, this is risky any way you look at it. This is risky at 60 years old to start a new career. And the reason I'm doing that is because it gets back, starting a new career gets back to, I mean, I can be very opinionated when I say this. It gets back, it goes back to this economy right now, the, the swamp creatures, they just don't care about this country. Everything is going to hell in a handbag. And business has not been what it should be. When three years ago, if I could take myself in a time machine and go back three years ago, um, I wouldn't even probably be thinking about this. But I kind of see the writing on the wall. And as I was explaining to Gary, there's this other thing out there called the internet. And there's all these booking agencies. And they're trying to make money off of what I always refer to as, as uh, just poor fishermen. You know, guys out there taking people fishing, right? And what it is, is if you ever heard of Hotels.com or anything, I'm sure hotels aren't all great with it either. And there's Andy's List. If you're a handyman or you're a painter, you know, you sign up and they do all this giant advertising all over the country and all this stuff. Well, there's there's several of them for fishing, fishing charters. And I mean, they're for people who know nothing, you know, basically. I mean, I know people who are in the charter business right now. You could just move anywhere and sign up for these places and they'll start throwing you a bone, right? Well, I've been on these, I'm on these websites, but the funny thing is, is they're not, for me, they never, they said to me, oh, we're your team member. We're going to help you. We're going to help you. You're, you're going to get business. And at the same time, to me, they're a competitor because just so you know, they're not from the United States. They're from Western Europe somewhere. They're doing all this computer based. That's what's amazing. That's what's amazing about it is that they're not even from, from the United States. It's, it's like, it's like they inserted themselves as the middleman. They're yeah. going to take a little of your money. Maybe they'll help you, but they're going to, you're going to pay for it. Oh, you're going to pay for it. But then there's the flip side where you get these these cone heads, as I call them, you know, the pointy heads. They don't have to know anything. You don't have to have a website. You don't have to take credit cards. You don't have to do nothing. You just put your crap on this website and people will, oh, they pick you. And then they start ranking everybody. Oh, he's, he's a select charter. He's this. Yeah. Well, what happens to everybody else? I don't get their thing. I don't get it. Oh, and you got to have <coughs> reviews and ratings and all this stuff. And <coughs> oh, we'll take we'll take care of you if you do this. Well, I'll tell you what happened one time. I actually remember I was I was at the gas station, and some dude called me and says, "Hey, man, I'm looking at your website." I see this, I see that, I see this, I see that. And I'm like, you're not on my website. I said, what's the address up in the the top there? What you're looking at? Oh, it's blah, 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 you know, booker.com, whatever. Captain Dave, that backslash, whatever. And I said, that's not my website. I said, my website's captaindave.com. It's flashing in the bottom of the screen. Okay. So... I said to him, no, that's a booking agent. I said, there's no way I, I, you know, that's, that's not my website, but that goes to show you what they do. And on Google, they buy big banner ads, just huge ads. 
So a moron gets on the on their phone, okay, and they see just this giant ad, and they click on it, and they think, oh, these are all the websites for all these charter fishing guides. It's a farce. You're not working for yourself really anymore when you sign up for those things. And the only charters you get are through them. Now, maybe you get some repeats and it's the same thing. You slip them your card and say, don't go through them next time. Just give me a call. So you maybe pick up a few of those people over time. <clears throat> that whole thing, you see, I'm old school. I, I used to have a Bell South Yellow Pages app, right? And I mean, these people, when they started these booking agents, oh, they're doing all the advertising for you. Yeah, well, what happens to my ranking on Google? Doom, 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 doom. You keep falling because they're up here buying this ad. So when you look up, you know, Jacksonville Fishing Charter, where's CaptainDaves.com? So there's, a, there's one of the things I was telling my dad all about this. I'm sick and tired of having to put up with website stuff because Google right now is pay to play. Then you got these, you got to, you got to pay to play, meaning you got to buy ads or you're just, you're, you're out in the weeds somewhere in a search. You got to remember people are searching, right? So you gotta you gotta pay for these ads, or you join them and they have you at the top. But then you're still competing with 175 other guys who are out just making their boat payment. You know what I mean? Because their wife told them to. And it's so easy to get a captain's license. A six pack captain's license is like falling off a damn stump easy. You know, I thought it was kind of hard. When I did it, you know, a little bit, I mean, the navigation was like kicking my ass. I had to, I had to navigate around and go in whatever that inlet is or wherever that port is around Block Island. Is Block Island, where's Block Island, Gary? Block Island's way far east of me. It's, it's really far east of me. It's, it's out towards, you know, how Long Island's, uh, you know, it's 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 got the two forks at the end. It's it's out it's out towards those forks. But it's it's part of New York, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Oh okay. I, I can't remember. This was yeah. Like I said this was this was more than twenty seven years ago. Yeah. Oh, there's a whole thing of little islands out there. There's Block Island. There's Shelter Island. There's you know. But I was there's... having to go in the New York port when I had to do my navigation. You do it on a real chart, and they tell you the wind is blowing thirty miles an hour from the from the due east and the current is going this way and you've got to navigate. So, I mean, you learn all that, but that's so easy to get a captain's license. Now anybody can do it. I could, you know, you could teach a monkey to do it. It's not a big deal. What's probably a lot harder is probably getting your journeyman's card to be a certified or state certified HVAC <laughs> mechanic or electrician, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, that's my big announcement is I'm going part-time people because I'm kind of sick and tired of websites, these booking agencies. I've got, I've got charters booked all the way to December. How, how do you but, feel about school, Dave? I mean, you, you feel like, you know, you're a little excited to do it or. Oh, no, I'm super excited. I'm super that's excited good. because that's this good. entire summer, let me kind of go back to this summer every single summer for 27 years has been taking kids fishing with their parents with their grandparents and i mean i've taken toddlers out toddlers people want to take three-year-olds two-year-olds out fishing and i go okay they can't do shit except stand there with their thumb in their mouth but a lot of adults use it as I don't want to pay for a no six seven hundred dollar charter. I just want to take my kid out for a couple hours. Right. That 
has fallen off. This summer, that's the reason I did the radiation at 7 a.m. I told my doctor, I can't come in here at 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. I can't do that. I end up burning my whole morning, right? And this is my doctor. I took him and his parents out fishing prior to the radiation. We had a great day. We had so much fun. So, I mean, he understood it the minute I told him that. He's like, yeah, I get it. Okay, 7 a.m., you'll be out of here by 7.15. I mean, it's like that quick, the whole yeah. radiation thing. It's no big deal. Yeah. So there was no business. Well, like you said, that 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 goes back to the economy, you know. I mean, I mean, people people just don't have the money right now, and if you do have the money, you know, who knows what's going to happen? You know what I'm saying? They're 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 reluctant to spend it. Uh, maybe I better stick a few bucks in the bank instead of doing this or doing that. You know, it's that type of thing. Unfortunately, too, you know, like. We're coming up on, you know, I know school starts a little early in Florida as opposed to New York, but, you know, school starts in August and September. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you got to buy all of them new school clothes and, and, and supplies and things like that. And unfortunately, people just don't have the money for it anymore. You know, they're just, you know, they're not going on vacations. I just came home from the grocery store a little while ago, $75 for one decent sized bag of groceries. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, it's that, that scumbag has ruined this country as far as I'm concerned, and I'm sure everybody else knows it too. And he is now finally getting caught. There's so much dirt on this this dude right now, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I know, I know but, it's good, it's playing out. Um, but at the same time, you know, it was abrupt. I mean, 27 years ago, the first kids' trip I ever did was only because a pediatrician, a pediatrician, a kid doctor, wanted to take his little four or five-year-old girl out for just a couple hours. He actually, that man, that doctor, gave me the idea to do it, and nobody was doing it. Now everybody's copying me. They all started copying me. Okay. When this doctor said, hey, can we go out for two hours? His little girl lasted an hour and 15 minutes. And she started crying about her not having her coloring book or whatever. Okay. <laughs> she figured out times have changed. Now they go, Daddy, where's my iPhone? Yeah. Where's my $1,200 iPhone, Daddy? You know. So, I mean, that's the difference. Um, yeah. Everything has changed. Everything has changed. I get calls every single week. Hey. We're doing this type of advertising and we're trying to find charter customers, you know, or charter clients for our advertising. And I go, okay, let's see how it goes. And they go, all right, well, that's, that's good. You're making a great decision there. It's only 500 a month. Oh my God. And I said, no, no, no. I, here's what I say to them. No, 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 no. If it's so great, Give me three or four months to try it. And if you prove to me that it's great, I'll sign up and be a customer for life. I mean, well, we can't do that. And I said, well, how do I know it's so great? Oh, well, we got numbers. Oh, my God. every Everybody lies. Oh, well, there's 480 searches a week for Jacksonville fishing charters. You know, and you'll be here and you do this. And we're advertising at these hotels and we're on these websites. Oh, my God. I am so tired of it. I am very, 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 very happy to go work for somebody else. Because guess what I always have in my pocket? The charter business. I got customers lying. I got, all, like I said, all the way to December. I got one coming up here shortly. In a, in a, in a week here, you know, I mean, but it's just, I, 10 years, 10 years ago, I, I, I used to say to myself, because me and my dad do a lot of talking, you know, and he always said, oh, you got to always have a backup. 
Just half of the guys, more than half, more than half around here, I'd say seven-eighths of every charter that goes out here gets a retirement check, is married with a wife that works, um, has a job. I mean, those damn firemen. If you're a fireman, what do you work? You work three days, you get four off, you know. Um, they got some other job and they're married, their wife works. I don't have, I never, I have not had a job for 27 years. So I better have some kind of skill, right, that I could say, yeah, I can, I can do this. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, you know, journeyman air conditioning mechanic, you know, I mean, I need, I gotta have, I gotta have something. So I still have the charters in my back pocket. That never goes away. I got regular customers and a lot of them over the last year or so, I haven't heard a peep out of them. You know, it's because they're probably not going to spend the money either. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's rough. And if you want a rough time, you know, summer, summer is that here's your sign for somebody like me, because here's what I've noticed in the charter business and a buddy of mine who's does offshore, you know, king fishing all the time. He even, he confirmed it because the economy is the way it is right now. People are all about. When I go fishing, how much groceries am I getting for that? What? Don't put the horse before the cart. Or, I mean, a cart before the horse. That's what they're doing. They're literally telling me on the phone. Well, how, what are we going to catch? How much do you think I'm going to have, uh, you know, when I go home? And I'm like, they're losing the aspect it's called fishing. I don't know if they've got 10 of these. I don't know if they can get on a boat and even do anything. See, because I'm not fishing for them. They're fishing. They are under the premise, I'm going on a fishing charter with a, with a, with a captain who's a guide for the air. That don't mean shit. The, rod ain't in, the rod's in your hands, not mine. And I'm telling you, I've had people blow smoke up my ass so so hard and i get them out on the boat <laughs> you know and they're having a hard time catching a damn croaker they're having a hard time catch and we're trying to catch bait we're trying to catch croakers for bait and they're having a hard time catching croakers i mean so but that's what the big announcement is is i'm going to school and I'm going to put the charter business to secondary, not, not first. It's going to be secondary because I'm wanting to try to refresh my skill because 30 years, almost 30 years, 27 years, whatever has passed by. And the technology in air conditioning and refrigeration and everything has gotten so more advanced that I need to bring myself up to speed, you know? I mean, I've been, I know it's advanced. I mean, from what I used to do and what I, I mean, I see it, I physically see it that it's advanced. I mean, look at the refrigerants have changed. The EPA put their thumb down on the refrigerants and the air conditioning companies and the refrigerant makers. It's just, it's a ton of, ton of horse shit, you know? So that's what I want to do. I want to bring myself up to speed. So that's well, it. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, Dave. I mean, you know, you put that on the back burner. And like you said, you, you'll always have charter business in your pocket. But I, I got to tell you, man, I, I never I never met a guy that made his living on the water. Like, uh, you know, a, char a charter captain, a, a commercial boat captain. I never met one of them that said, this sucks. 
I, I, from day one, I didn't want to do this. That's something that you just, you have to love it to do it. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? You got to love it to do it. It's just in you, you know? Uh, but did you know what it actually is, especially in the charter business? The first thing it is, it's a people business. Fishing is literally secondary. Secondary. Because number one, you got to get them to book a trip. Number two, you got to get along with them while you're out there. Believe me, right. people on my boat, I don't ever want to see their faces ever again. But during while we were out there, I get along with everybody. I mean, you could take, you know, some gangbanger in uh, Chicago. You put them on my boat. Hey, man, I get along with them. Well, I'm, they're gonna, they're, they're gonna behave. I mean, there's no walking home. You know. What I mean? no, no. And I mean, they kind of know the hierarchy is I'm going to, you know, teach them, show them, and I'm going to be kind of helping them running the show. You know, I've actually had some of some guys sort of like that before on my boat. And they were, they didn't act, they didn't act the fool. But I kind of, I had a feeling I had in my, in the back of my mind, I kind of knew what they were. I kind of knew. I mean, when somebody says, you know, you say, hey, what do you do for a living up there in Chicago or whatever? You know, I mean, these guys are like, and they pay you. I mean, they pull out a wad of money like this thick, and they're paying you hundreds. Yeah, they're, they're, not, wor- they're not working at McDonald's, let's put it that way. Yeah. They don't work at McDonald's. And I've but, like I, but like I said, there's, there's no walking home, so you got to yeah. behave. You know yeah, I mean? they kind of behave, even though you – you as a retired policeman and i have spoke and i told you that one of my senses is immediately profile oh yeah you know you know within within five minutes you just have yeah. a, you have you have a, a it's dance. almost like a six, like a sixth sense yes you know but and, i'll be honest with you it's something like that it's kind of a blessing, but it can be a curse too. Sometimes yeah. I just wish I was oblivious, you know. Sometimes I wish I didn't, I wasn't able to do that, but I can, and and I know within a couple of minutes. Sometimes I'm wrong. Every once in a while, you know, all right, maybe, but oh, yeah, I'm wrong. I, yeah. I understand that. Ninety-nine yeah. percent of the time, I'm pretty much right. I I know. I know within five minutes. I mean, I've experienced it all as I've spoke to um, in in some of my other videos when I just sat down and told a story, my wolf tail videos. I had a guy die on my boat. I had a guy get a phone call while we're out on a charter. We're into four hours of a six-hour day or a two hours of a six-hour day. He gets a phone call. Your mother's dead. Your mother just died five minutes ago. She's out fishing with me. I mean, this guy, the emotion this guy went through right in front of me was phenomenal. I mean, it, I mean, thank, he said to me, thank God I just saw her last week. You know, he says, so I, I'm kind of at peace with that, you know? Yeah. But here he is. He, there's nothing he can do about it. But somebody somebody called him, you know, in the middle of fishing. Yeah. I mean, I've had I've had all kinds of things happen. I mean, there's a lot of embarrassing things I don't even want to talk about that have happened that were my fault. I mean, all kinds of stuff. So I mean, 27 years worth of experiences. The thing that keeps me keeps going is the people believe it or not not the not the fishing because the fishing here is kind of routine season after season like right now this storm is going to start kicking in the season right the season and i've already had just what was it yesterday or the day before i booked two trips within an hour and one of them is with one guy one guy Wow. Talk about lucky. Because that's another thing, part of the economy that I've noticed. 
you either don't get or you get calls or you get emails from like mothers wanting to take their kids out, right? And they ask, since I don't have prices on my website or anything, they ask. And I tell them the price and what we're going to do and everything and where we're going to go. You never hear from them ever again. That's called, it's too, it's too, too, it's more than I want to spend. That's what that's called. Yeah. And then you get the, um, you get the secondary, you get the people who, oh, I don't want to go shark fishing. I want nothing but grouper and snappers. I want to, you know, I want to ship fish home um you know to my mother what this ain't alaska you're not catching a god dang 300 pound halibut and you gotta slice it and dice it and freeze it and ship it off in a in a, a styrofoam box with dry ice to your mother i mean people just don't know they don't know so there's that aspect where if i'm not made if i'm not getting groceries out of this trip like one guy I talked to, he said, what are you doing right now? I said, the sharks are carpeting the bottom. The sharks are carpeting the bottom. I said, at the inlet, behind the shrimp boats, I said, that's what I do because it's big, fast action. IG, instantaneous gratification. That's what that is. And he tells me, do you keep the sharks? I said, not necessarily, because you're going to eat. You're going to try a pound and a half of it, and the rest is going to go to waste. And there's nothing I hate more than people going out hunting or fishing and wasting the resource. That is a major no-no with me. I don't like that. I did it one time, took out two girls fishing. They caught a... Big giant black tip of the jetty. He wanted me to kill it. We're gonna take that home and eat it. By the time we got, I got done cleaning. This was probably a hundred plus pound black tip shark. They had to use. They had to rummage through their vehicle to find a black garbage bag for like leaves. That's what all that went in. It didn't even fit in their cooler, and I knew that shit was gonna go to waste. I knew it. They ain't gonna, they're not gonna package that up and freeze it and eat it. Yeah, it's not, it's edible, but it's not, it's, yeah. it's not that great. It's a shark, it's not a fish. Yeah. Well, this one guy says to me, he goes, Well, I don't want no sharks. I want to send fish home to my mama or his wife or oh, somebody. And I'm like, Dude, I mean, you're not, I told him, I said, You're not going to Alaska. I said, Whatever you do, if you get a little one gallon baggie, you're good, you're good. I said, you can eat that while you're here. You don't have to ship it off to nobody. And I said, you don't understand. It's the middle of July. I said, you could go out and be trolling for kingfish or something, and you may never get a strike all day. So I said, that guy has to turn around, and all of a sudden, now you're into bottom fishing. Oh, now you got a bottom fish. And I said, then you're going to catch red snapper. Because they're carpeting the bottom, and you got to throw them back. If you don't, if you land one in whole condition, where a shark or a barracuda didn't chop them in half, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, there's all this stuff. Because he wanted, oh, I only want a half day. That's another thing they always do. I only want a half day because they think, oh, you're going to split that. If you do it, let's say an eight hundred dollar charter, oh, a half day is only four hundred. No, it isn't. I don't even, I've never done a half a day. I've literally never done a half a day. It's four hours from dock, you leave, and you're back to the dock in four hours. Because people won't quit. They'll be fishing. They just, they forget all about time. So I say six hours. That's how I always did my charter. Six hours. Other than a little two-hour trip for kids. So it'll be a kind of a, a relief, number one, financially, because, I mean, you got to do all this crap with your website, search engine optimization. You got to do all this advertising if you want to do anything. And you always feel and beat down from it. I know I always feel just beat. 
every week somebody calling you with some scheme to, oh, I'm going to get you some more charters and all this. Man, let let somebody else handle that. I just want to want to get get back into the trade and just do charters on weekends and holidays. Well, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that, Dave. Nothing wrong with that at all. You know, I'll I mean, be joining. I'll be joining the 300 other people in the in the tri county area because not many of them do it full time. Not many. Yeah. Yeah. No. So how, how how you how you you know, I mean you touched on you know the the treatments you got. How you feeling? You feeling good? And you know, no, there is no feeling. You numb? You get you get um, you get like I explained in the one video. I got shot in the belly with this hormone where they put right. they give you some estrogen, which which is what women have. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And what that does is it shrinks your prostate down. Yeah. If your yeah. prostate's maybe this big around, you know, normal guy. Yeah. And it shrinks it down. And then they they beam it to kill the cancer cells. Right. No, but I mean, you, you feel like, you know, no no nausea, no, nothing. Oh, nothing. No, no that's, nothing. All chemo, that's all chemotherapy. That is a okay. totally different thing. A lot of people don't understand any of that. And they're all, you know, in the comments, which I mean, I appreciate comments. I love comments because I try to comment back to everyone if I can. Right. Um, Oh, I hope you're feeling okay. There is no feeling. Other than the balloon shoved up your ass and that makes your toes go. Yeah. When they pull it out, you go. Yeah, that's. that's, Other than uh, that. But I mean, that's, that's not, it's not terrible, terrible, because if you've gotten to that point, you've had that done up your ass several times already, and it's not a balloon. It's a god dang vibrator shaped thing with a god dang needle on the end that shoots up through your ass into your prostate, okay, uh, and pulls out a little chunk to be sent off to pathology, okay. So if by the time you get to a balloon, you're used to ass treatment. As my dad says, it's so funny. He goes, you know, they got to use the closest orifice they can get into. And your butt just happens to be there. Because they're yeah. not going to go up. Now they went up, they went up, you know, Mr. Happy. They go up there to just in February it was for me to have their kidney stone pulled out. So yeah. all of my orifices have been explored. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that's, I, well, I guess after the 18th time with the balloon, you're like, all right, just go ahead. You know? Oh just... yeah. I, I'd say the first week you're over it, you're like, just, okay, come on, let's go. My feet are sitting up like this and a guy and my knees are, you know, bent and I'm laying down. Right. And you know, you get this blanket over you and you pull your shorts down. He goes, Okay. He slathers this thing up and he says, Take a deep breath. And he goes, All right. And you go, eh, okay. And then it's just there. You don't feel anything. And then after the radiation thing goes around you, he walks in and goes, Okay, take a deep breath. Pops it out like popping a cork, Boink! and you go uh, ah, with your toes. Oh Other than that, God. it's fifteen minutes maximum. I didn't believe the doctor when he told me fifteen minutes from when I pull in the parking lot to when I'm in my truck driving away for six weeks every day, Monday through Friday. Not a huge deal. Not a huge deal. Like I said in my last video about it, when I explained the entire process, <coughs> if you had to go to a dentist to have a root canal, a tooth pulled, or whatever, and you had to do multiple visits, that's 10 times as brutal as that prostate radiation. 10 times as brutal. Okay. Now, the big after effect 
and it's going away because it's not in, not as intense. When they stab you in the belly there and inject this hormone, it's like a little BB under your skin. I don't think it's this way, but I use the word time release. It kind of time releases through your body, you know. Right. And um, it makes you get these hot flashes because you've got too much estrogen in your body. Yeah. Yeah, you were saying, yeah. yeah. When women go through menopause, that's what they get, right? Yeah, yeah, I've been through that. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's not a huge deal. I always said, I feel it when I'm, I even told the doctor, he says, are you, are you getting hot flashes? And I said, yeah, but I'm already hot. And he says, all it is, is your blood when you get those hot flashes, is rising closer to the surface of your skin. That's all it is. And he, you get that little, like going from, you know, you go from a, a decent climate, you walk out a door, and you're walking into like a flamethrower, and it's like, whoa, heat, and it's gone that quick. Heat, gone. I've noticed in the last week or two, which he told me it could last up to six, six more weeks, eight more weeks. But I noticed there's a difference. It's falling off gradually. And he even yeah. said it'll fall off. That stuff yeah. is going to wear out of you. Yeah. And does the PBR seem to help with those hot flashes? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> uh, PBR has nothing to do with hot flashes. Well, I figured I'd just throw that in there. You know I mean? Yeah. Eh, I'm excited because you know what? I probably this summer have sat around doing nothing more than any time in my 27 years. Now, let's take it back further. There was the great economic collapse of the entire globe. Remember that? Yes. Okay. That was basically started in 2008, thanks to Obama and, and all his... Uh, cronies and his his um, Wall Street cronies and all that. But um, I always thought I, I could get a t-shirt. I made it through the world economic collapse of the globe, you know, or whatever. <coughs> but I never seen anything like this. No, it's horrible. Well, it's fuel horrible. prices back then weren't $4, $5. I well, mean, that's, that's the cool. whole problem. That's the whole problem. Yeah, because from the day that that guy took office, he basically shut the spigot off to our, uh, you know, energy independence. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He he just shut it off, and everything is dependent upon fuel. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? It doesn't matter if you have somebody making a product in Wisconsin, whatever it could be, widgets. Who knows? They got to make it. That takes energy. Then it's got to be packaged. That takes energy. Then it's got to be loaded onto a big truck, possibly a train. That's going to take energy. Diesel fuel. Then it's going to a warehouse. Then that's going to be unloaded with a forklift. That's going to go on another truck, more diesel fuel. That's the whole, that's a big part of what's wrong. Is is, yeah. is the only, only person who understands that is Trump. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it. that's it. Yeah. Like he said, two things, you know, a wall and a wheel and drop the fuel prices and make us energy. Yeah. Into of course, that, that the, the, you know, everything revolves around that. Everything, everything. Yeah. I mean, some prices would go down if I was paying, you know, if I was paying two bucks for diesel and, and let's say just because it's so lopsided and, um, you know, a buck 60 for, for um, fuel for the boat or something, charter pr I drop charter prices. Yeah, you'd be able to, sure. But I mean, now, no, I'm paying four dollars and sixty cents right. a gallon for goddamn diesel. Yeah, you'd be able to drop your prices. That guy from Chicago, the plane fares would go down because jet fuel would be cheaper, and he could book a flight and come see you. Yeah, it all a lot of it, a whole bunch of it revolves around you know energy and, and, and fuel and, and it's just a it's yeah. just a ball that's rolling but that's my big announcement as 
I'm not quitting the charter business, but at the same time, you know, it's not going to be the primary. I'm going to be working on other things, other things. And, you know, 10 years ago, like I said, me and my dad would have this discussion when bad things were happening through the world economic collapse. I thought the world was going to end then. Well, truly, it took a little while for this scumbag to be in office and all his cronies, which they think he's not doing anything. They truly believe that there's a possibility that Obama is running the entire country. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that theory too. Yeah. I mean, I don't know who they could go up to Biden with a piece of paper and go, sir, we need you to, uh, we need your signature on these. What's this for? Oh, it's a way to make America, you know, uh, you know, the drug prices or this or Medicare or Social Security. Oh, okay. And what it is, it's just the opposite. He would never know. They could just blindly do anything with that piece of crap because he's just, yeah. a, he's a puppet. Yeah. And they knew that going in. You know, they knew that. Why do you think they picked him? Yeah. I mean, and, they, and, and if they do get him out, we have, you know, the, 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 the wonderful vice president to, uh, to look forward to. I'm, I'm sure that would be. Nothing will ever happen with her. She's a short timer. She's going to be gone and you will never see her face ever again. Yeah. Well, hopefully. When she's done, when she's done, it's over. I don't think you'll ever hear from her ever again. She needs to go back to wherever the hell she came from. California, Canada, wherever the hell she's from. Yeah. California. Yeah. Yep. But yep. that's my, I'm, I'm super, I'm super focused on it. See what I even made up? I'll show it to you. Uh, I had to, uh, I've always had this right behind me, hanging on this this closet door. But you can see this one. It says, here for Swamp Scum Biden. I'm going to hang this on the tree in the backyard. And I'm going to sight in my air rifle because it's a little off. <laughs> uh, actually, I wish I had a picture of his face. I'd stick it right there. You know, there's probably nobody in, probably nobody I hate more in this entire world. Right now. Yeah, it, 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 it's very, uh, it makes you mad. And it's very frustrating to see, you know, but it's okay. I mean, Things seem to be as though the maybe the the walls are closing in on him, like you said, you know. Yeah. But, you know, people are like, you know, they, a lot of people say, "Well, why isn't any?" It is happening. Be patient. Let them build a case. Let them, you know, they just uncovered some more stuff with his aliases or whatever it is, and oh. it'll come together. It'll happen. Oh, and then there's this Israeli guy who knows all about him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was working for uh, the Chinese energy company. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that guy? Oh, my yeah. God. I mean, they're, they're going to stuff him. They're going to try to kill him or something. Well, he's in, he's in hiding right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's in hiding. He They they, they already tried to do something to him, and he's, he's hiding. So, you know. His, his problem was he trusted the United States government. Yeah. Woo! Don't do that. Yeah. Even though he, what was he? He worked here, but he was Israeli or something or whatever. I mean, yeah, I think, he, I think he's an Israeli with American citizenship, but he yeah. worked for that Chinese energy company. So, something along those lines. Yeah, he knows. He knows from his story. He basically knows it all. Yeah, they don't want him. They want him dead. That's yeah, I'm he's sure he's gonna have this un. You know, if they ever got somehow. The CIA or something, he's he's gonna end, end up in a really fatal car crash. Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah, like that. that. Yeah, they, uh, the, the, the Clintons had, you know, that happened to a, a numerous amount of uh, friends oh, and associates yeah. that, you know, didn't, weren't useful anymore. Should yeah. I say. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's basically it. I mean, that was my big announcement. 
is I'm going to make a life change. Um, and there's many factors that have made this, made me have this decision because, you know, you can only take it up to so far, you know? And I mean, I guess I'm not a booking agent team player because you know what? I know what it is like to be on your own and do everything yourself versus just let me give you 30% and you handle it all, you know? Nah. Yeah. I mean, you could do that on YouTube. Well, you said you were, you said you were old school, which means um, you like to keep what you earn. <laughs> that's, that, that's yeah. That, that's that, basically being old school. You know I mean? You don't want somebody's hand in your pocket every time you take a charter out. And know? honestly, what you have to do is, they're taking a big chunk and people don't realize they're so stupid that when they see pricing and they don't even know that it's a booking agent, like that one guy says, oh, I'm on your website. No, you're not. That when you go through a booking agent, you're having to, because when you do a deposit for a charter, you're giving it to the booking agent that's their cut that deposit is going to be their cut right so what do you got to do you got to raise your prices because i'm not going out there me personally i'm not going out there with four people bait license tackle ice fish cleaning um wiping the kid's nose i mean all that stuff i'm not doing that for anything less than a hundred dollars an hour i'm not doing it yeah, you got, I got too you know. much, and I got too much invested out there. I got yeah. oh, thirty years invested, and I mean, God dang, some blood, sweat, and tears. I mean, yeah. I back in the day, me and my dad took one Honda off and put another Honda on in a weekend because I had charters to do the next week. I mean, that's the kind of blood, sweat, and tears I'm talking about. Change an engine out over the weekend. Go buy a, a, a an engine lift. Go do this. Go do that. I mean, it's just a lot. People, maybe people realize. I know everybody thinks you're just. Oh, you got sponsors and people give it. No, there's no glory. All these guys think they're getting in it for some kind of glory trip. I mean, it is what it is. You're taking people fishing, and ninety nine percent of them don't know how to fish and they certainly don't know how to fish here because in Jacksonville I don't hardly take anybody out unless there's somebody from here that they're coming to visit or something because this isn't like some giant this isn't Miami Beach it's Jacksonville Florida it's it's not it's not Miami they're not going there for the fishing right yeah. It's not the keys, you know. It's not. It's not any of that. Yeah. You In know? other words, you don't have that crystal clear blue water and the the white sand and the. You oh, know, you no. don't. <laughs> no, we don't even have. We don't have that. We don't even have the Chiquita bananas walking up and down the beach like they do here down there. You know the the Chiquita bananas. You know, <laughs> that's what I call the women down there. The look at me now. Oh, look at me. I've got on a super thong. <laughs> we used to see that at the Miami Boat Show. The way the women dress down there. I mean, it's kind of like that. Uh, it's, that it's that South American kind of influence. You ever watch a show and it's some South American show? And all the women, you know, they're all scantily clad with, you know, tons of makeup and they... You know, I've, I've seen it before when you watch that. What is that? Telemundo or whatever, that Spanish yeah, channel. Yeah. I mean, them women, oh, my God. They're not women. They're like women. They're plastic women. <laughs> yeah, they, they they wear those thongs and all that, you know. But oh, I mean, God, and skin but tight, you know, everything. It, it, I don't understand. I mean, when you were a kid, and you're from Pennsylvania, did you have a thing called a wedgie? 
I don't know what he is. Oh, when I, I was, yeah, when I was a kid, yeah. What you what? grab the underwear and it goes up, you know, you know where you don't want it to go. Yeah, and it was, it was uncomfortable. You hated it. But when they wear those thongs, that, that it's like having a wedgie all day long. You know what I'm saying? It's a permanent wedgie that you can't take out. Well, yeah, but they don't care about how they feel. It's how they look. <laughs> That's a but big sacrifice. Well, women, if they don't believe it or not, most of them are trolling. These young yeah, girls. I, I mean, now I it's so. TikTok and taking pictures, right, and all yeah. that crap. They're trolling and looking to hook up. They want to hook up that big fish, man. Yeah, and that's well, all the things they do it. All I can tell you is I, I gave a few wedgies. I got a few wedgies. I hated them. Yeah, it's not good. It. It's not good. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll wrap this up. We're about uh, an hour and five minutes already. Woo. Oh, man. Yeah, that's um, nice. Maybe, well, if we get comments below that if somebody wants to hear more on this type of format versus, um, you know, have one of these thrown in every once in a while. I kind of got away from it because I thought my webcam was broke. It wasn't that. Yeah. It was It was the software I had a problem with. So Yeah, we get, you know, we get some decent comments. We'll talk about wedgies, wet willies, all that stuff. Uh, you know, we're just, you know, we relive the old days. Balloons and butts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah balloons and butts. How about that. That yeah. that's like the ultimate wedgie. That is that's beyond wedgie. That's <laughs> yeah, that's the ultimate wedgie right there. Yeah, that's that's borderline like torture, but all right. <laughs> but when I'm starting school, I mean, we could do one of these, right, um, on a weekend or something. Right. Absolutely. There's going to be more hurricanes coming by. But this one was really nothing for us in Jacksonville area on the Atlantic yeah. coast. It was really nothing. Yeah, uh, we're going to get a little piece of it. I mean, it's going to swing out, you know, it's going to swing out to sea. Uh, I think they said like a little little further north in the Carolinas. So we'll, we won't yeah, see. I, I thought it was going to just circle. They go back around and fizzle. I don't care where it goes as long as it doesn't come yeah. your way. Well, it doesn't come here. That's but I can tell you where it did hit. It is sparsely populated in that area. It's kind of sparsely populated. It's not a big area. With I mean, Tallahassee's out there, the state case, uh, capital. It's yeah. Where if you got Florida pointing down, and then up here where it meets the Panhandle, that's called the Big Bend area. The big that's, bend, where, yeah. that's where it hit, and I'm telling you, sparsely, sparsely populated compared to a lot of places. They call that the nature coast or whatever, because yeah. there's not much there where it actually hit. Now there's a bunch of little, tiny little towns and stuff like that, but a lot of them are probably flashing yellow light type towns, you know. So yeah. it's not like it hit, but I mean. Tampa, they got flooding. Um, uh, other, you know, large towns got it. So that, you know what that means for me? My insurance rates will go even higher next year. It's already through the roof where if I don't do something, I can't afford this house. The yeah. insurance rates are just are incredible. Yeah. So you got to I always say to people, you know, I can't believe when I moved in here, my my mortgage and my my taxes and my insurance was one thing. And now I'm here and it's 18 years later and it's almost doubled. That check every month is almost doubled. But still, you can live cheaper here than you can ever live up where you're at. Yeah, I, I know that. I'm, I'm totally definitely yeah. cheaper, and the taxes still are a lot less, and things like that. So, but that's a whole other subject that we could do one of these these podcasts about. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, all right, we'll end this. 
If you got any questions, you want to make any comments, put them below. This was a good thing to do on the day of a hurricane. I didn't know the hurricane was even, I mean, I kind of heard about it coming. And Gary says, hey, let's do it on Wednesday. I mean, you said that long, you said that days ago. Yeah. Wednesday. And I went, yeah, okay. Yeah, a little Here. hurricane, a little wind, a little tide. Yeah, there it no is. Big deal. <laughs> I just got to go out and just pick up a bunch of damn twigs tomorrow. That's all it is. It's just twig city everywhere. You yeah. Know? Yep. Which, that's okay, because that's what my neighbor next door, next door always used to say. When the, when the wind gets 40 miles an hour, at least we get a tree trimming. Yeah. You know? And he's right. It's all the crap that's dead. It ends up on the ground. You pick it up, and the next storm takes a little bit more. True. Yeah. All right, Gary. I sure do appreciate you sitting in on this one. All right, Dave. We've both got our flags behind us. Hopefully, uh, like and subscribe and, and, and comment. Oh, yeah. Just comment, everybody. Comment. And I know I don't say it because I don't like begging for nothing. Everybody on YouTube begs and begs and begs for, ooh, give me a like, give me a like, do a share, do this, do that. I always figure, you know, anything is better than nothing, a comment, a like, a dislike, I don't care. Any one of the three would, would help out. So that'll be it. I appreciate Alrighty, it. Then. And I will, we'll both talk to y'all later. If I get out fishing or I get doing anything, I don't know. I don't know. I'm supposed to have, you know, two guys coming up. I don't know what we're going to be doing, but I do see a video in the making. I don't know what kind of fishing, though. I don't know if we're sharking or what we'll be doing. It'll be deep sea fishing, Dave. Oh, big sea fishing one more time. <laughs> All right, Gary. Talk to you later. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. Take care.